I want to talk about one man in particular because, you know, the, the title of the stream is like what we should expect from the Yankees uh, post lockout, which is a whole nother topic in and of itself. But I think one person, one player um, who I would really like to see the Yankees go after now, whether or not they actually go after him, we have to wait and see is Seiya Suzuki. Um, I know a lot of people might not be too familiar with him, but he is from the Nippon Professional Baseball League. Um, and he's supposed to be posted um, once the, the lockout does end and he'll be eligible to be signed by uh, major league teams. But he has some really, really solid tools. Um, I was just reading a few articles about him and kind of like what he would bring to a major league team. Um, bro, th there's scouts out there saying that he's like a combination between like Bryce Harper and Pete Alonzo. Now, I hate like <laughs> when people throw out these like stupid comparisons because obviously, if we're just being honest, he's probably not going to be as good as either one. Um, but when you're kind of just looking at like the potential to see what say Suzuki could bring to the Yankees outfield, which is already like kind of decent as far as the corners go, um, when because you, you have Gallo and left, Judge and right. Um, but the only problem is that he doesn't play center field. If Seiya Suzuki was a center fielder, I think that he would probably be a Yankee yesterday. But yeah. I think the only thing that will hold them back is the fact that he's not a center fielder. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you already have two starting right fielders, right? Gallo yeah. and Judge are both naturally right fielders. And so is Suzuki. So do you want to have three starting right fielders out there? I mean, honestly, I would love to see Gallo in center and Suzuki in left. That would be that would be ideal, I think. But um, you know, I think that's probably going to stop them from doing it. Honestly, yeah. I don't see them, you know, getting a third right fielder. Have you seen his swing? I have. It's very pretty. It's nice. Like like <laughs> it's it's beautiful. Like, and that's my thing, right? It's like I hate being one of those like, oh, the eye test is so much fun. The eye test is fun, dude. Like when I when I want to go like see how a player like what he would bring to my team, I'm going to go on YouTube and type in Seiya Suzuki highlights just because it fulfills <laughs> that need in my heart. But, yo, I was, like, doing my little research before because, you know, I'm proactive. Tell. Um, and I came across a CBS article about Seiya Suzuki and, you know, all the stuff about him. Uh, and I saw this little excerpt that I was so excited about. I sent it to the unhinged group chat because I was like, yo, guys, th I'm, I'm <laughs> pumped about this, dude. So it says, as we recently explained, we, accept, we expect Suzuki's contract to come in lower than his talent demands as a tax on the failures of recent NPB hitters. I believe Nippon Professional Baseball. Um, even it. so, there's sufficient reason to think that he could become one of the offseason's biggest bargains, especially if most teams are more concerned with the risk than the reward. And that's my biggest thing here, right? When we're looking at, like, what the Yankees have kind of, like, been into the past couple seasons, like, it's always been, like, low risk, high reward, right? Yeah. And if Say Suzuki isn't going to be demanding that much money because of, like, the lack of production <clears throat> from former players to come from his kind of same situation, um, mm -hmm. and the Yankees could sign him to a cheap deal because of that, bro, what is there to lose in this situation? And the only thing that pisses me off is that they don't want to put Judge or Gallo in center field. Because that would be my ideal scenario. If you have, yeah. like, let's just say you want to put, say, Suzuki in left field, and you could put Gallo in center. I Or put Gallo in right, Judge in center. I, I'm fine with that, too. I'm, I'm cool with either e either way, bro. But it just pisses me off so much that, like, rather than doing that and, like, having Hicks as your fourth outfielder, which is a scenario where I'd love to see him, they're probably going to go into the season with Hicks as their starting center fielder, and they're most likely going to be re-signing Brett Gardner to be that fourth <laughs> outfielder. Like, let's just be real with each other at this point, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not you never give it up. You literally funny. just never give it up. It, it, it... Because are every you, time okay. I talk to Pat, like I've never had a conversation with Pat, and Brett Carter does not come up in some way, shape, or form. Are you I, not? I mean, we talk it? a lot. No, no, you're absolutely right. It's probably Thank what's going to happen. But it's so ridiculous at this point. I mean, it, could you imagine we go into to, um, opening day with Brett Carter, the starting center fielder, because yes, Hicks is hurt again? I can't imagine it, bro. I mean, yeah, it's it, not that no, far fetched. No, no, no. It's not even the thing that Hicks would be hurt again. It's just that they're going to start him, bro. Like it's it, I mean, we laugh, but deep down inside, those laughter, like that laughter, hides it's pain. pain. It hides pain. tears, bro. <laughs> but I don't know. I think overall, like you just look at a talent like say Suzuki. Like I said, he fits the the Yankee offseason acquisition for the past couple of years. Low risk, high reward. You're yeah. not gonna have to give him a massive deal. And That's unfortunately, fair. the only thing that seems to be blocking him blocking him at this point is unfortunately the fact he doesn't play center field. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if they're in the market for any other center fielder. We honestly haven't heard anything because of the lockout. 
But speaking of the lockout, Brian. Yes. Nothing's going on. Like no. literally nothing's going on. Going back, say a Suzuki. Um, we're talking about a guy who, you know, when I'm like, yo, the one year I want to go to spring training, this dude's mm-hmm. probably like, the one year I want <laughs> to go to the MLB, dude. Like he can't even sign. Um, oh, TG goes, Pat, I want Suzuki so badly. It's just one of those things where it's like, yo, Brian, hear it just me makes out, right? Sense. Have you ever like seen a clothing brand that you really like right maybe not on hinge maybe, maybe a different one i don't definitely know. not on hinge but and like on. you go on the website and like bro they're having like a closeout sale and they have mm-hmm. this little special where it's like yo mystery t-shirt only three dollars you buy it and you oh, get a okay. mystery t-shirt bro you don't know what you're gonna get it might be a great shirt that you love or it might be a, a terrible shirt that you're never gonna wear in your life but the thing is it's very cheap so why yeah. not go with it? Because the bro, the reward is so high. That's what Seiya Suzuki is, except the odds are he's going to be good. Right? Yeah, but he's not a three dollar shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean though. Yeah. It's, yes. it's there's low risk there, bro. And yes, and, and for perspective, I, I don't know if you saw this, but I saw some estimates of how much they think that he's gonna sign for. And it said somewhere around five years, sixty million, twelve million a year or that's so. That's very good. That's that's pretty cheap. That's that's Aaron Hicks money, right? He was what seven years, seventy million, something like that. Something like million? that. So I mean, that's a no brainer to me. If this guy can be even, you know, three quarters as good as he was in Japan, I mean, that'd be sick. Yeah. No. Yeah. And also, like, the only thing that kind of like bothers us a little bit too. Um, is the fact that he's not a lefty. I would have loved if he was a lefty because that would have been sick. But still, like, either way, bro, throw, throwing his right-handed bat into the lineup and just seeing what he could produce in the Bronx, mm. I'd love to see it. Um, I mean, also because we missed out on Shohei Otani a couple years ago. Um, but other than that, like, the Yankees have kind of been, like, in the midst of all the international free agents, and they seem mm. to land most of them. Um, so if we yeah. could kind of land this one, that would be nice. I don't see, know. The, the real thing here that I just realized, Pat, the only reason you want them to sign him is because if they sign him, they're not bringing back Gardner. That's the That's only not reason. true. You don't care at all about <laughs> this guy. You like, I guarantee you, Chat Pat has never even looked at his stats. He has no idea how good this no, guy is. See, he's just you... like, he's not Brett Gardner, so he'll get him on my team right now. That's it. <laughs> no, I but win. here's the thing. Here's why I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. Okay. Because I posted a video on Twitter probably at least a month ago at this point oh, of right. his swing. I was like, yo, everyone check out how beautiful it is. I'd show He's it on stream. Seats, okay. I think I think that's I think I'd get flagged though. If probably. I yeah, don't yeah. don't bother. I believe you. I'll, I, I you're not going to lie it's to me nice. about that kind of thing. No, it, right. it's nice. But yo, either way, like if the Yankees <laughs> don't sign say a Suzuki, I need another outfielder. Like I yeah. I definitely no, I need agree. another outfielder.